This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are from Alpena Civic Theater, and we're going to talk about parallel lives. I have Carol Walchek and Terry Carlson. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good thank morning. you. As I told you before we started taping this, when you two called me on the phone and said, hey, we're doing this production and you were in character and I'm driving down the road and I'm cracking up laughing, I think this is going to be an awfully good production. We hope so. <laughs> We've been working hard on and not, not that the script requires it because it's a very funny, insightful, humorous script. To so you're with. the only two actresses in the production? Correct. Okay, so about 20 different characters, wow. at least, ranging at from least. the age of four to the age of 60 to maybe even 70. Possibly 70. Yeah. 70 yeah. is a good age. No, come on. Okay, we like that age <laughs> very Male, much. Male, female, we're playing, we're, yeah. we're doing it all. Okay, <laughs> now I see it was written by Kathy Najimi and Mayo Gaffney. Mo. Mo. Mo it's, they're Ka they go by Kathy and Mo. Kathy and Mo. Oh, they had a TV show back in the 80s, correct? I believe so. Yeah. And oh. uh, people can catch a lot of these uh, little vignettes on YouTube and, okay. and so forth. But this is indeed a, an entire play. Uh, so tell me up. what we can expect to see. Do you want to start? Yeah. No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> the play opens with what we would call supreme beings and they're in the act of literally creating the earth they're making decisions about who's going to be who and what's going to happen and the entire show revolves around what they have created so we're going to see lots and lots of different characters yeah, yeah. so we become men we become women it's it's a series of really raucous vignettes about life as it's been created by these supreme but beings. you play sisters we do play sisters, we play boyfriend, girlfriend, um, we, pay we play best friends. And a number of, of the skits, we play best friends. Yeah. And then we change, we actually start out one skit where we're very young and we age as the skit progresses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then we play little old ladies in New York and Brooklyn girlfriends, oh, yeah. buddies, yeah. besties. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Alpena Civic Theater is famous for the costumes and the set design. So what will those... Well, that's going to be a little bit different. Okay. Because you're not going to define us through our costumes. Okay. It's more with, I don't know, our dialect, wouldn't you say? It's all character driven. Yeah. It's all driven by the roles. So uh, Terry and I, who happened just to have working together for the first time. Oh my goodness. Amazingly, amazing. we They're are amazing. able to just what, bounce off one another. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, very creative. So yeah. very little in the way of costumes, very little in the way of the production uh, of the stage. Well, yeah. But we thank Grace Morrison for that because she set us up beautifully. And uh, Mary Ann Crawford is our costume designer. So, But it is limited costuming. It really is. Really. Ooh, yeah. it sounds intriguing. Well, it is going to be a lot of fun and a yeah. lot of laughs and I couldn't be happier to have I'm re yeah, I mean, I don't, I, Grace Morrison, the director, said to me um, that she thanked me for doing this walk with Terry, because this is Terry's farewell role, and I don't want to, I don't want to get into too much, but she's leaving Alpena, so um, it's just such an honor to be doing this with her, and we're having a ball. Yeah, we are. We're having, and we're, we change dialects, we change from Southern to Brooklyn to uh, I, I, just everything you can imagine. Everything, yeah, everything. And, and, and the play touches on, oh gosh, everything from religion to relationships, I guess. The struggles of rituals of modern life, basically. Th that's it, yeah, that's it. Now, Terry, you're a well-known actress in our community, so how is this role different for you? Hmm. Well, it's not your traditional um, piece, per se, because I've never done a show that has vignettes in it. It's okay. always been a solid play that goes mm -hmm. from right. one Absolutely. topic, right, right? You know, the whole thing flows along all on the same subject matter. Well, this we are totally chunked into different things, and you go from one dialect to the next dialect to the next dialect. But it is a lot, a lot of fun. It is totally different from mm -hmm. anything that I have done. And I think the reason we selected this, because it really, it really can portray the talent that actresses ah. have. Ooh, and good one. And that's kind of how we want it <laughs> yeah. to end. My 17-year career here is kind of you know, portraying that, and certainly comedy, because that's what I'm known for, and 
at this emo emotional state, that's what I need. You this bet. Is, it showcases just everything that she can do. And as an actor, you can't ask for anything more than that to be able to just bounce off each other. It's great. And what about you? What made you decide to try out for this role? Uh, just very, just long straight. I went to see a play at ACT. Uh, someone said, hey, why don't you leave your number? Next thing I know, the director calling me at the suggestion of Nan Hall, who suggested Parallel Lives as a production. Um, and it was perfect because you can pick and choose from the vignettes you decide to oh, do yay. so um, that's what we've done um, yeah. or our director has done for us and like uh, we said it's all character driven so uh, we split up these characters in an amazing kind of way sometimes I play a man sometimes she plays a man you know it's oh, just yay. funny it's, it is it's funny it's, it's fu fun it's a lot of fun it's so different and challenging, challenging. <laughs> <laughs> period period <laughs> and we gotta let our audience know when they can come and see it because one thing about Albina Civic Theater, theater you always sell out so they got to get their tickets got to so get their tickets the tickets are available at Alpena Civic Theater and at Neiman's Market oh, as I well I see that yay yes and we are running it's just one weekend June 9th through the 12th performances at 7 30 on the 9th 10th and 11th and then the two o'clock matinee on the 12th and there are no reservations right oh, so you right. buy your tickets you come in it's just general seating and general oh, seating wow mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. So Ooh, uh, that'll be exciting. Yeah, we are hoping for a sold out house, oh, but I please, think yes. all of all of Terry's followers are, are sure to be there, I know. <laughs> okay, it sounds wonderful. And then um, we have about two minutes left, so we just want to encourage people to keep watching the website, keep watching um, the newspapers and listening to us because we'll be telling about the fall season that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's going to be great. Church Basement. Church Basement Ladies Part 2. Part mm -hmm. 2 and I know Part 1 was very very wonderful mm -hmm. so Part 2 will be good. Mm -hmm. And just like to encourage people if you're looking for a place to um, volunteer to help out you know Absolutely. obviously you've been doing it for 17 years you know look at the friends you've made and how oh, it's yeah. enriched your life so I encourage people plus when they do tryouts there you guys do the most painless easy tryouts mm -hmm. ever so if you're ever thinking I'd like to be involved you know people just come on give them a call come yes. on out and the number is huh it's not on here mm. And none of us know mm. that number. None no. of us knows that number. Speed no. dial. <laughs> yeah, speed dial. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, June 9th through 12th, Alpena Civic Theater, just a wonderful production, Parallel Lives, a comedy, truly funny, and just going by what you two ladies have portrayed today, it's going to be a good show and one no one's going to want to miss. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thank you. I'll be right back with Jessica Luther and some information from Alpena County Library following these messages. Hi, welcome back. I'm with Jessica Luther from Alpena County Library. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Nancy. I know today we want to talk about the summer season, and I know this will be your first time going through the summer season at Alpena County Library, and I'm telling you, I don't think there's a place in Alpena that's busier than Alpena <laughs> County Library in the summer. That is what I've been told, and looking at our schedule, I am not surprised. Uh, first off, we have Kitty Donahoe coming, and Kitty is coming on June 15th, and she's doing a two-part presentation for us. Uh, she's recently written a children's book, Ooh. Henny and Benny Bunyan, and they're two little kids who are related to Paul Bunyan, and they have all these adventures, including a flapjack eating contest. Um, they have a recipe that goes wrong, and then a disaster for the little town that they live in. Um, so Kitty is going to be presenting that at 6 o'clock, okay. and she will be performing some songs, doing a reading from it, and the books will be available for sale. Oh, yay. Then immediately following at 7, she's doing a more all-ages program for us, and it's Lighthouses and Legends, Ooh. which we thought was just so very appropriate given yes. that we're in Alpena. Um, so that is a presentation of folk songs and tales all about uh, lighthouses, their keepers, the sailors' adventures on the Great Lakes, and also about the men and women that lived in the area and were impacted by living on the Great Lakes. You know, she's been here before, very well received, and she's just absolutely wonderful, so friendly, so approachable. I hope that you'll be totally out of seats. <laughs> we're hoping so, too. No, she's been fantastic to work with, and we're really excited to be able to bring her. Um, we've gotten some support from the Alpena Agency, so we're able to bring in oh, programs great. like this. So we're pretty pleased with that. Do we that. have to register or anything? There's no registration. It's free. Just come and The show. date again is? June 15th, okay. and the children's program is at 6. And the all ages is at seven. Okay, sounds wonderful. And then we are moving also outward, but a little inland uh, for trails and treasures. And that's being presented through our special collections okay. department. 
and that is on June 23rd, and that is at 6.30. And we have author Ron Rademacher. He's coming in, and he will be discussing the unique uh, over unique and overlooked trails that you can find in every region of our great state. Ooh. And we have heard wonderful reviews of presentations Mr. Rademacher's done throughout Michigan, and it, we're very, very excited to be able to do that. So people who have an adventurous spirit should definitely be yes. at this event. <laughs> for sure. And then we also have our sign up for Summer Book Club. Oh boy. That's the big one. <laughs> That's the really big <laughs> that one. That is the big one. Uh, sign up for the book club, and that is for ages 3 through 5th grade, and it is June 21st, and the registration starts at 9.30. And Summer Book Club is a free program. And it's for the kids to come. They get to do weekly activities and crafts. Uh, we have magicians coming. We have all sorts of artists coming to perform. And so they'll sign up on the 21st at 9.30. Okay. Then there will be a magician performing. And then there will be Sundays available after that for purchase. And each week the kids can come in and they report on their books. And at the end we have the carnival in August that's free for everyone who participates. And that one, I mean, we've gotten so much community support for. Oh, yes. oh it's Everybody loves the Summer Book Club. I mean, Neiman's has been fantastic. And I think there's some other locations where they can go read. Are there, I mean, a Boys and Girls Club, I believe? Yes, the Boys and Girls Club will be participating, and I believe Nemska is as well. Okay. And one thing, um, you know, this is the most fun um, learning disguised as fun, but, you know, and, it, and the facts prove that if a child doesn't read through the summer, they can lose up to one grade in reading yes. skills. Yes, and that's a real struggle for te teachers yes. in the fall, because then they have, to, they have to make up that lost ground, and it's, it's really important that the kids keep doing this. It is, so it's, you make it painless and mm -hmm. easy, and it's fun, especially if they attend all the activities, and yes. then the carnival at the end. It's not too early to start ex asking for volunteers for the carnival, exactly. we, we need an awful <laughs> lot of people to pull this <laughs> there off. There are a lot of kids at that carnival, yes. I've been told. Now, for our older kids, okay. we have the Maker Lab Camp, and that is for children around 5th to 10th grade. Okay. And for that, it's uh, every Thursday starting June 16th at okay. noon, and that is towards kids who are interested in technology, DIY products, crafting, and learning. Okay. Um, we have a lot of cool activities for them, and registration is required for that, okay. so they'll need to call the library if they're interested in attending that. And then our, one of our things we're really, really excited about is our Making is Learning three-day workshop. Okay. And this is a professional development workshop that we're doing in conjunction with the University of Michigan. Great. And this is for anyone who works with children or is an educator or a Girl Scout, Boy Scout troop leader, civic group person who is interested in incorporating hands-on activities with their group. Okay. Um, so it, that is free as well, and it, they offer continuing ed credits for that. Oh, perfect. So there, for information on that, they can go to our Facebook page. The okay. dates of that are July 20th, 21st, and 22nd, and they are all-day workshops. All right. So keep that in mind. Yes. And just a reminder for all of our viewing audience that the library is now closed on Sundays okay. and will be through Labor Day. All right. But we're really excited. Um, and all of our holiday closings and everything can be found on Facebook or our website. And you have a wonderful website and the wealth of information on that website until somebody actually looks at it and I mean you can have learn about GED classes mm -hmm. you can um, you know get homework help there's just so many things on there that people can um, when I look at it, I'm just amazed how much information <laughs> that I didn't even know that information was available. It is. It's a very comprehensive website. I mean, you can look up the local history. You can look up genealogy. I know personally, uh, I looked up the history of the house that we bought, and I was just amazed by seeing the progression of different people that were there, and it's just such a cool place. And also, they can come in anytime. The selection of magazines is outstanding. It is. And before you buy a subscription, look out at a magazine, check it out. Um, all kinds of other fun, fun and wonderful things. The computer lab. What are the hours of the computer lab? Um, the computer lab is open every day that the library is open from okay. 9:30 until uh, 9 in the evening, Monday through okay. Thursday, and then Fridays they're open from 9. Friday and Saturday, 9.30 to 5. And how long do you allow them to sit at those computers? You get a two-hour time slot. Okay. Um, you can come back a few hours later and okay. sign on again. And those computers are very much used. Oh, they are very used. The current computer lab is crowded every single day. 
And you know, the things we talked about today isn't everything that goes on at the library. I mean, it's just, it would be impossible to put it all in the time that we have. So it is. go online, go check out the library, go in there, find out all the other wonderful things that are going on, mm -hmm. and you know, use this wonderful facility in our community. Yes. We okay. Are. Anything else today, Jessica? No, we are just, I think we're just gearing up to really have a fantastic summer at the library. and. We're really excited to be able to bring all these free things to the community. Yes, and Summer Book Club always needs volunteers for reading and for the carnival and, and for the events. Yes. So please um, stop by 356-6188. Yes. <laughs> Give them a call and say that I'd be glad to help. For sure. Thank you, and I look forward to talking to you next month. Thank you, Nancy. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Megan Cameron, mathematics instructor at ACC. Welcome, Megan. Thank you. So we have a really neat, or you have a really neat uh, seminar coming up in August, and I would like uh, you know share what it's about with the viewers. It's really neat. Okay. The conference is called the Here on Shores Ed Tech Conference, um, and it's happening Tuesday, August 16th at Alpena Community College. And the conference is a collaboration between ACC and the AMA ESD. So I've been working with Ashley O'Connor. Um, she's kind of the driving force behind all of this. Um, we have some great speakers coming in, some great presenters, breakout sessions. It should be a good day. It should be a good day. <laughs> uh, Ashley is a very um, uh, innovative, uh, inspired teacher down at Alcona. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and, and Ashley have partnered before on something similar, yep. right? She presented at a conference that we, I did last year, and she approached me and said she'd like to do one that was technology focused. So um, what she did, she secured our keynote speaker, which is Dr. Lee Graves Wolf, who's an assistant professor of technology education at MSU. So she's going to start the day off with a, a keynote for about an hour. And then we have four different um, breakout sessions and in each session we should have about four or five um, presentations that you can choose from. Great. So okay. who, who do you hope attends? Anybody <clears throat> in the education field. Um, you know, anyone K-12, hopefully we get some people from the college, uh, even some administrators. We have a couple of sessions focused for um, presentations and collaborating on Google. So anyone in the education field. Yes, well, the administrators better show up. They'd be pretty lazy <laughs> if they don't turn up for right. this. That's right. So what is, uh, um, what would be some of the things that the, the uh, technology in the classroom, what would, what would the focus of some of the, the seminars be? Okay, well, the, the conference is basically on, on integrating technology into the, the curriculum. And this is across the board um, because teachers have so much to do in their curriculum now. They don't have time to just focus on a technology lesson. So we're trying to get it just in there every day, um, use it you know, throughout the day. So some of the great sessions that we have are Google 101, screencasting, Appy Hour, which is kind of our favorite selection of apps, uh -huh. Classroom Droids, Google for Administration, Interactive Presentations. It's just a sample of some of our sessions. So the approach is to try and encourage or uh, inspire teachers and administrators to understand how technology can enhance classroom instruction. Exactly. Across the curriculum. Exactly. Because um, technology isn't really um, a luxury anymore. It's kind of a necessity. And so students, you know, they need to start learning at kindergarten, first grade, in order to be competitive when they look for a job or go on to college. Very true. Mm -hmm. Do you find, as a mathematics instructor, that students, younger students, just out of high school, come to your classroom with a higher expectation of technology than mm -hmm. maybe they did five or ten years ago? Absolutely. And I've taken some calculator courses myself just to try to keep up with, you know, what students are learning in the high school. Um, and, and we're kind of changing the focus on what we teach in our math classes, how much do we make them do by hand versus use technology for it? It's, it's a big shift and where's the middle ground? How do you, I'm curious, how do you make that determination whether it's 
um, forcing someone to do something by hand is kind of the traditional method. Mm -hmm. The expectation is that they learn right. it better or deeper. Right. Is that true? Well, you'd, you'd like to think they have a, a little bit deeper understanding. However, my, your cell phone is a very powerful calculator. And so you can do some pretty intense statistics even on your cell phone. And so do we focus on the driving or the interpreting? Ah, so that's very the great debate. Where do you fall on that? I like to think in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to do it to both ways. But unfortunately, you don't have time to do everything as deeply as you wanted to. But it's an ongoing process. So Really neat. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, would there be um, um, technology that applies both in the math classroom and in the, say, the English and the science classroom? Or are they mm -hmm. kind of separate to each no, area? Um, some of the presentations are, are classroom management. So where you could put up on the screen um, an icon for each student. And you know you could have a, a symbol for whether that student needs to come and see you, or they're they're on task, or they're you know free time. So you could use that in, in really any yes. classroom. So in some ways it can enhance or streamline classroom mm -hmm. management or individualize yep. it. Yep. Yep. I was very impressed when um, I guess it wasn't last spring, but the spring before when mm -hmm. you you folks had this first. Uh, yep. Um, kind of similar seminar, um, the ways in which people had thought through technology and, and it's um, mm -hmm. also the collaboration uh, potential of it. Could you speak to that? That struck me. I, I see technology as a non-technology person as kind <laughs> of individualizing things. But um, Ashley in particular had figured out ways to use technology to help collaboration and group work. Mm -hmm. And it's great, you know, especially teacher to teacher and student to student. Um, the conference is just a great way to, to share ideas. And, you know, a lot of people know that there's technology out there, but they're not sure how to apply it. And so the conference really just helps people come together and it just starts a discussion. And, you know, and even, even as an instructor, I have to be open to the idea that a student might know more than I do about one specific, you know, way to use a calculator and so we collaborate you know in my classroom and so oh, I didn't know you could do it that way here's another way so there's no you know definite right or wrong it's sure it's always changing well um, explain to the viewers a little bit about the role of the AMA ESD okay well the the AMA ESD is the Alpena Ramsey Alcona Education Service District mm -hmm. and so that includes um, like well Ashley O'Connor she's the um, instructional coach. She goes to all of these schools and she helps, um, you know, asks what they would like to learn and she goes back and, or from school to school and, and assists them. Um, we have about 200 teachers in that district total, K-12 teachers, and um, we're trying to, to make this, you know, work closely with them from the college to the ESD. I think it's a great, it's a great um, community. You look at the, the potential of, uh, of uh, an, um, new knowledge among 200 mm -hmm. uh, teaching professionals, the leverage, the opportunity for young people is significant. Right. And I think what, too, is special about this conference is that it's here in Northeast Michigan and, you know, there's not a lot like this so close to home. We don't have to travel. Well, congratulations on that. Yeah. Again, it's when? It is Tuesday, August 16th. Okay, at ACC. Starts at 8 a.m.? At 8.30 a.m. Oh, I should probably say the website is the hereonshoresedtech.amaesd.org. Outstanding. So this is going to be an exciting day of, of uh, technology and teaching mm -hmm. uh, designed to help uh, classroom instruction and students. Exactly. And that's what you do. And thank exactly. you for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Megan, and thank you for watching uh, Talk of the Town. We'll see you next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. 
The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.